We talked about the Doppler effect for sound. We're now going to talk about the Doppler effect for light, which is one of the most important uh, principles in our understanding of the current state of the expanding universe. This Doppler effect is the principal avenue for showing that the universe is indeed expanding. A lot of questions about how it came to be expanding, but there's no doubt that it is expanding. Let's get right to it. The um, equation for the electromagnetic Doppler frequency, this is different from the one that we had for sound. Why? Sound requires a medium to propagate through air or a solid or a liquid. Light does not require a medium. It propagates through nothing. It's just electric and magnetic fields. For source and observer coming together and for source and observer moving apart. The same basic principles will apply though that we learned uh, with sound. If, an approach, if a source of sound is approaching you, then, so this is you, and this is the source moving toward you, you're going to hear a higher frequency. Same thing is true here. If uh, the source and the observer are coming together somehow, uh, that could be that the source is approaching you. That could be that you're moving toward the source, or that you're both moving together. But somehow or another, you have to be coming together. So here's some possibilities for how that might happen. Either way, the distance between the source and the observer is decreasing with time. That's the important part. Well, the observed frequency, that's the frequency that you observe, is equal to the frequency of the source times 1 plus v relative, where v relative is the speed of the source relative to the observer. This is always going to be a positive number. So you never have to worry about the relative speed being positive or negative. It's always a positive number. So if it's the source is moving this way toward you, um, you just need the relative velocity as a positive number. If it's coming from the other way toward you, you always need a positive number. No big deal. So you're going to put that positive number in here. You're going to divide it by c, the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So you're going to end up with something that's bigger than 1, and the observed frequency is going to be greater than the frequency of the source. If they're moving apart, so the, um, in fact, let me say one more thing about this. A larger frequency means a smaller wavelength. So if we were to plug that frequency into c equals f lambda and find the corresponding wavelength, it would be less than the wavelength of the source. If you think about the visible spectrum, what wavelength is the largest uh, visible wavelength? And you say, well, it's 700 nanometers. I already learned that. And what's the smallest visible wavelength? Well, it's blue. It's 400 nanometers. And red has a larger wavelength than blue. We're moving to shorter wavelengths here. The observed wavelength is less than the source. They call this a blue shift. If, if the source wavelength were in the visible range, then the wavelength observed would be shorter moving toward the blue region or the violet region of the spectrum, violet being 400 uh, nanometers. They call it blue shift. Um, what about here with the moving apart? With moving apart, um, you're going to, the only thing that's different between these two equations is this minus sign instead of a plus sign. That means that this whole factor is going to be negative instead of, po I'm sorry, less than one instead of positive, more than one. And that will say that the observed frequency <coughs> is less than the source frequency. And that would imply then that the wave, the observed wavelength would be greater than the source wavelength. So you're moving from a, a, a wavelength to a longer wavelength that's observed. This is called a redshift. And this redshift 
is what we observe in, in looking at objects that are far away from the Earth. We see this shift in frequency, lower frequency, higher wavelength for redshifted objects, <coughs> and that allows us to determine distances. All right, uh, an example, hydrogen atoms in a distance galaxy emit blue light. That's the wavelength emitted, 434 nanometers. That's this number here. That's the wavelength of the source. 434 nanometers is 434 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, which is the same as 4.34 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Um, and the observed wavelength is 464. So there's the observed. And we're trying to find the relative velocity of this galaxy with respect to the Earth. Um, so it's a little bit of math. <laughs> um, we know the fact that, that this has to be away from the Earth. And how do we know that? The wavelength has gone up. And the frequency has, so you get a larger observed wavelength, which means a smaller observed frequency. And that means moving away. So that's this case here. This one here, smaller observed frequency and larger observed wavelength. We're looking at a redshift here, and we're looking at moving apart. All right? So we plug in this equation. They must be moving apart. And we solve that for V relative. I'll let you do the algebra yourselves. Uh, we have everything that we need. And then you can just plug in and find out that the relative speed is 1.94 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. Uh, these, red, these Doppler shifts are used to determine the rotation rates of galaxies. So if we're here on the Earth and we're looking at a rotating galaxy out there, um, there's a, it's rotating away on this side and toward on this side. And you can use that to determine um, not only the average to find out how fast this galaxy is moving away from the Earth, but also to figure out with the differences in looking at one side versus the other, you can figure out how fast the galaxy is rotating. Doppler shifted spectra allow accurate velocity determinations. How so? These are spectra, a very narrow range of um, wavelengths, only 882 nanometers up to 885. That's a very, very narrow window. And this is in the near infrared wavelengths that are. Um, Infrared, so what are infrared ray lengths? They're ones that are longer than the visible, They're longer than red. Red's about 700, here's 800, longer wavelengths, perfect. And what you can see is um, for the sun, this is the spectrum of the sun, the green spectrum, and you can see these lines, these spectral lines that appear at particular spots that measure the, um, electronic transitions in atoms in the atmosphere of the sun. Arcturus is a, is a star in the sky. It's a reddish colored star. And this is its spectrum. So we're seeing a shift between the sun and Arcturus towards longer wavelengths. And that's a redshift. Move toward longer wavelengths is a redshift. And that implies that Arcturus is moving away from the, Earth, from the sun. It's just exactly the same uh, example we talked about last time. If it's moving, moving apart, 
the frequency is less and the wavelength is greater. But these spectra, I want you to know that this isn't just, uh, these spectra are as indicative as a fingerprint. These spectra are incredibly precise. This, this line represents an atomic transition and you can't move that line around except to shift all the lines relative to each other. They're all three lines are shifted by the same amount. So you know how fast that, galaxy, that star, that galaxy is moving away by just looking at that red shift. It's as um, indicative as, as a fingerprint. Uh, police radar guns. If you want to uh, have evidence that, that this stuff really works, then the next time you get a ticket, uh, you'll, you'll thank me. So the, the radar gun sends out these blue outgoing waves that bounce off of the car, and this car then becomes effectively a source of electromagnetic waves. Those sources are propagated, reflected back, but since that source is moving, then it's like these two objects are coming closer together. That, uh, Doppler shift can be measured by that radar detection unit and hence your speed determined.